Graduated from Jamestown High School? Right, 1940. December 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. Came home after Pearl Harbor and Del Gornson talked me into going up to Buffalo with him and we signed up with the Marine Corps. I went back to college for a year. I came back the following fall but I got a notice that uh, I had to report and so they sent me to Notre Dame for my senior year. Okay. And so we were we were marching over the campus of Notre Dame, and attending classes. Who was Vic Kulbitsky? <clears throat> well, he uh, was in our officer training at Notre Dame, and he had been a fullback at the University of Minnesota. And he went with us, of course, to Paris Island, which is a, about a six-week course. About the end of the fifth week, he was missing. And I had no idea what, what was going on. But the, the first day that we were out of boot camp, we picked up a newspaper and there Vic Kobitsky was playing fullback for the Buffalo Bills. No kidding. <laughs> he had been discharged because of flat feet. So that's. That's what we heard, anyways. A Paris Island uh, for a boot camp. Mm -hmm. Then where? Then up to Quantico for officers training. They sent us uh, by train to California mm -hmm. with a troop. And uh, weren't too long in California before we went aboard ship. We stopped into Pearl, Pearl Harbor and uh, some army general, or not general, officer came down waving things. Said, everybody off the boat. And uh, supposedly we were headed for Iwo Jima, mm -hmm. which uh, well, we weren't told that, but that was the undercover. So when they, we got off the boat and sat there for couple weeks. Really? Then moved on to Guam and sat there evenings waiting for the call over the light speaker to report for to various places. Four of us were called in and were going back to Pearl Harbor to a Japanese ordnance school. They were preparing going to prepare to land on, on Japan. So we went there to uh, Hawaii and uh, when we were circling around the island we could see things were going wild down there. This bulletin dated San Francisco. The Federal <laughs> Communication... We landed and that was the day the Japanese surrendered. Oh my gosh. So uh, back to Guam again. So we were in Guam, and we had already, before that we did Jamestown parties here. Ah. There were four or five of us that would go down on the beach and bring our lunch or something. Who, were the, who, were, who was from Jamestown? Well, John Peterson uh, was a naval officer. And a fellow by the name of Dick Samuelson that's still living in town here. And I recall he was in the Marines. Oh, Reno Anderson, mm -hmm. known as Peanuts. Chuck Magnuson uh, was there all the time that I was there. And, uh, and this all happened on the beaches of Guam, huh? Yeah. One day the uh, General, we had the whole division 
out in the battlefield, <laughs> or practice field. He said, you can all be home by Christmas. This is August, you know, after the V-Day. You'll all be home for Christmas. Lots of cheering and all around. Chicken. Christmas came, though, and we were sitting in China. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, so we, uh, we said we were sent to China, <clears throat> supposedly to see that the Japanese didn't take half of the country back with them to Japan. Because the Japanese had really taken over China, and they were afraid they'd bring all their riches and whatever back. So. How long were you in China? <clears throat> well, it was about six months. The thing was, we got there on our ship, and up in the bay, and uh, all through boot camp and everything, if any of them followed up, I say, you were what? as much as a Chinese fire drill. Right, Chinese fire drill. So <clears throat> we sat in the boat out in the harbor, we saw one of the buildings on shore going up in smoke. And uh, pretty soon the, the Chinese firemen came and laid down their hose and were just going to sprink, sprinkle the water. And a train came along, ran over their hose, <laughs> and the building burnt to the ground. Oh, so we all cheered. Yeah. Here's the finest Chinese fire drill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was next was uh, <clears throat> Jamestown. They were recalling people, and this one day they announced the last recalls had gone out. So a big sigh of relief. The next day in the mail, is my, my package comes, report. Uh to California for duty. So my six, six month old son and my wife drove with me out to California. We took off for Korea, board the naval ship. There's a 39th parallel and our ship, something was wrong with their navigator. He got us up above the the line, and we started to get bombarded from shore batteries. <laughs> so they quickly turned it around and went back to where it was safe to get off. But we joined the front line troops there. Mostly sat in a, in a hole for, for months. It was There'd be a lot of things going overhead, right. missiles, things. Just to remind each other that they were still there. Yeah. Once in a while, we got a hole in our tent from a piece of a missile that it didn't stay there too long. And then I, they sent me down to Pisan. And I was there with the, uh, where they are sending troops home and where they're taking new guys in before they send them up to the front. I bet you couldn't believe that you were, after having gone in through World War II, that here you are, six years later, sitting in Korea. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I took my wife and kid to California. They're not going to ship me out again. I'll be training troops. <laughs> I'll be training them. That was, didn't happen. So how long were you in, then in the service uh, the second time around? Oh, it was less than a year, I less think. Year best to take what comes and do what you can to overcome the bad parts. 